This is the second video on how you can create an Arduino-like circuit on a breadboard. This involves creating a circuit around one of the processors used on some models of the Arduino, which can then be incorporated into your projects. I've done this using the shrimping kits, which are based around an 80 Mega 328, which is the same microprocessor that is used in many of the Arduinos, including the Arduino Uno. For this video, I've been using project kits these kits are no longer available, but you can buy all the components that are required and I'll provide a link to my website where the list of components is provided. The project website is still up and it has details of the circuits and the code needed. And feel free to continue using that, but please do not try and buy a project kit from them as they've stopped selling those. In the last video, I went step by step wiring the initial Blink project and the initial setup of the Arduino IDE, which I used on a Raspberry Pi. I won't be covering this in the same level of detail, so if you've not seen that video, I suggest you look at that first. There'll be a link at the top of this video and it's included in the description. In this video, I'm going to be covering two of the more advanced kits, which are based around clocks. This includes adding a real time clock, creating an alarm clock, and showing the current time using LEDs. For most of the shrimping kit circuits, they recommend using a 400 pin half plus breadboard. This particular project, the recommendation is two of these 400 pin breadboards for the additional components that are required. Now I'm wanting to include some optional components. This will allow me to reuse the Arduino-like circuit for other circuits and designs in future. So I'm going to create my own layout on this extra large breadboard. This also has external power connectors, so I can connect it to a separate power supply. The additional components will be explained in more details later. In the earlier video, I created the Blink project. I've now tidied up that project by creating custom length wires, which makes it look a lot neater. I've made use of the power lines that I have on this particular breadboard, and I've cut the legs of the components so they are closer to the board. This makes it look a lot nicer but more importantly, it makes it easier for me to explain what each component does. The complex circuitry is hidden inside the integrated circuit in the center, which is the AT Mega 328 microcontroller. This is the same microcontroller which is at the heart of the Arduino Uno and other Arduino-like boards. Note in my case, I've mounted it upside down in terms that if you read the writing on the chip, then it's upside down and pin one is now at the top right. Whereas for most integrated circuits, you position pin one at the bottom left. Note, this is the same way that the Arduino mounts the AT Mega on their boards, so it does make sense to do so. It also means the connections to the USB UART used to program it are at the top, which was more convenient. As a quick run through of the circuit, the microcontroller has two power supply connections, which I've taken from the power rails of the breadboard. I've included two pins at the top for connecting to the UART or it can be powered through a different power supply through either the banana plugs or the power socket just to the right of the banana plugs, which is something I added to the breadboard separately. There's a crystal at the top of the circuit which is used for the clock timing, and that is the bare minimum needed for the processor to work. You then need to connect the board to a UART for programming, which is what the pins are at the top. There's a pull-up resistor used for the reset signal, which uses the data red dependent of the UART. And this goes through a capacitor used to clean up the signal to send signals to the Arduino to ensure a clean reset is received prior to uploading a new program to the processor. The LED and its current limiting resistor then provide a way we can test the circuit by creating code to flash the LED. You can also see how this looks on the schematic diagram. You can see the input output pins which are labeled with a D for the digital input or output pins and an A for the analog inputs. These are the pins that will be used with other electronic components for the rest of the circuitry. The next stage is to add the rest of the components. These are the optional components that I mentioned previously. There are mainly a few capacitors to smooth the power supply and to improve the clock from the 16 megahertz crystal. For the power supply there are different size capacitors. The larger can shaped capacitor is an electrolytic capacitor. It is 10 microfarads which can ensure the power supply stays stable even if there are additional loads on the power supply, such as the number of LEDs being switched on and off. 
There are two smaller 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitors which are smaller in size and capacity compared to the electrolytic capacitor but can react faster. If you just looked in terms of ensuring these components are wired to the same connections they could just be put across the supply rails but from a noise point of view it's often better to have the ceramic capacitors physically close to the pins of the microprocessor. Finally there is a reset button. This allows you to press the button to reset the controller if required. With these components installed the circuit is now close to what is provided by an Arduino board such as the UNO. In our case the UART is external whereas on the Arduino it's integrated into the board and the same for the power supply where we need to provide a stable power supply either through the UART connection powered by the computer USB port or by disconnecting that and connecting an alternative supply directly to the breadboard. Note that it is important that only one power supply is connected at a time to prevent risk of damage to the power supplies. Here is an updated schematic diagram showing the circuit with the additional components. The next stage I'm going to look at is the alarm clock add-on. This is going to add a real-time clock including battery backup. It also includes a piezo buzzer which can be used to sound an alarm at a specific time. The project is split into stages. First is a case of adding the real-time clock integrated circuit which is a DS1307. The shrimping project shows a layout where you can install this on the same 400 pin breadboard but I've used it below instead. This provides a separation between the Arduino and the add-on. The main component is the DS1307 which has a clock crystal at 32.768 kHz. There is also a battery backup which connects to the real-time clock so that it can keep track of time even if the power is lost. There's a buzzer which connects to a PWM port on the AT Mega 328 to sound an alarm. And to communicate between the AT Mega 328 and the real-time clock there are two wires used which is used for I2C which is a serial protocol. It needs two pull-up resistors for the I2C connection which I've included in the Arduino part of the breadboard just because from a space point of view they fit nicer there. At this point it's possible to communicate from the Arduino like circuit to the real-time clock. There are libraries available and the code is available from the Shrimping GitHub project page. As long as you've done the steps that were in the previous video of how to install the Arduino IDE you really just need to go and download the source code for the projects which is on this GitHub repository. So if you just click on there you can go straight to it, it's github.com slash shrimpingit slash projects and I'll include a link in the description of the video. You can just download from the code, you can use the download zip file and this will download all the resources. So it's quite a large file with all the different types of projects in. I've already downloaded this so I'll show you on here. I've open the zip file and I've copied them into my sketchbook folder which is in slash home slash pi slash sketchbook and particularly I've copied all the libraries to here the one we're going to be using here is the RTC lib for the real-time clock at the moment and I've copied the project files into this shrimp in it folder and in particular you see there's the alarm clock ones and the first one we're going to look at is hard code time and it's here. So I've now loaded the clock01 hard code time project into the Arduino IDE. Uh, the other thing you do you need to import that library that we've just added. I've already imported it down here um, but it's just a, a case of clicking add library and finding those libraries that um, were downloaded from the GitHub page. Also need to choose the serial board, uh, serial port and the board. Now when I was testing this I had to do one change to the code. It's, it's supposed to look at the chip and if it's got the year 2099 then that's default and it says it's going to have to change it. It changes it to this date 2016. Obviously that's a few years ago now but uh, 
you can change that to whatever date you want. Um, it's just hard coded here in this example. However, mine had a spurious date on it, something like 2046 when I first started it. So I did just run this RTC adjust manual. I literally just copied that and put it in the setup here. Run that once and then you can delete it. But that was just something I had to do for this particular chip to be able to run this test. And now done that, so serial port, I'm using a USB UART and it's USB zero. The board I set to Arduino Uno. And then you can push this onto the 80 mega chip by just clicking the arrow, which will compile the code and then upload it. And to test it's working, go to tools and serial monitor and it'll watch for messages being passed back on the serial port. And as you can see, it's sending this date in 2016. And you can see how it works. It's, it's basically quite simple. It converts it to this particular format using the serial print, which just sends it out on the serial port. That's the first step. And now we can move on to, this is just one hard coded time sends it and, and receives it back. Now move on to actually using it with the real time clock. The next step is to put the microcontroller to sleep when it's not doing anything, but allow it to be woken up when required. The wake up is handled by data from the serial port, which has been connected to digital port two, shown here as a yellow wire. The microcontroller can then be told to go to sleep, essentially a low power mode, and then woken up again through the serial data in. It's code to show this, which is alarm for low power. And if you send that, we can see that in action through the serial monitoring. So it's sent it, so we can go into the serial monitor. And as we can see that it's already gone into the low power mode. So if we just send anything, if you just hit the carriage return, it's exited the low power mode counts for a short period of time and then goes back into the low power mode. Again, you can wake it up and it'll go back to sleep after a few seconds. The final thing for the alarm clock add-on is to add two button switches, which can be used to control the operation of the clock. These are connected to digital pins seven and eight. They're not programmed in the supplied alarm clock code from Shrimpin but that's some code you could add yourself. Finally, for the alarm clock part, it refers to click zero file alarm, which is this code here. And this is the basis of being able to create alarms that play a tune through the speaker at preset times. When I tried to compile this on the Raspberry Pi, I received an error message saying that the string has no member named remove. This is because it's got the old string handling libraries. And looking into this, it looks like the IDE provided on the Raspberry Pi OS repositories is a very old version. So I downloaded a new version from the Arduino.cc website and that works better. So you might want to look at upgrading your IDE. To do so, go to the Arduino.cc website and go to software downloads. The version you want is the Linux ARM 32 bits version. You have to download that and extract it and it's got an install script inside that you can use to set up your environment. So that's it for the alarm clock add-on and then the next part is to add the LED clock which can be used with this to provide a LED display of the current time. The second clock related add-on is called the LED clock kit. And this can add LEDs to display the current time. It's not a conventional output as it uses 12 LEDs for the hours and 12 LEDs for the minutes. In the project kit, these are just mounted on the breadboard in straight rows. 
but you could mount these in a circular pattern to look more like a clock. Or they could be used to create a word clock by illuminating appropriate words. This shows the circuit wired up on the breadboard. I've left the LED switched off here as they're very bright and dominate the board when lit. The circuit is based around a pair of DM134 LED driver integrated circuits. These include shift registers as well as having a constant current output driver for the LEDs. I won't go into details here about shift registers, but I have already created another video which explains the operation of shift registers. That video uses different integrated circuits as it was designed to be run from the 33 volt signals from a Raspberry Pi or an Arduino Maker series. I'll include a link in the description. Essentially, the LEDs that are to be turned on are sent out as a serial data stream which pass through the first integrated circuit and then onto the second. There is software code to use this. The code is called LED Clock01 Unary. This is the code here. Due to the cryptic nature of the LED positions, which are shown using this arrangement here, I found it difficult to be able to test straight away whether it was working or to know whether it's showing the correct time. So I cre created my own stripped down version of this. Basically, I took the same code and removed a lot of the real-time clock aspect and just looked at a current time. So I've just called it test LEDs here and most of the code is the same but essentially I've just removed the, the entire loop and just manually typed in a time here, compile and upload that to the microcontroller and then I can test each of the times to make sure that it shows a correct value. And then once I'd completed that, move back to the normal clock code and use that for running the program. Here's the final schematic diagram showing all the different components, including the Arduino part, the real-time clock and the LEDs being driven by the LED driver integrated circuits. So in summary, we've created an Arduino-like circuit on the breadboard and then added a real-time clock part, which includes a buzzer, and then another part, which is the display of time through two sets of 12 LEDs. This is similar to how you would look at creating many projects where you think of them as building blocks and you just connect them together and your circuit can evolve in that way. A possible improvement would be to show the actual time on a seven segment LED display if that's what you wanted to create. So I've shown this in a technique on an early video where I just used two seven segment displays but you'd need more components to expand that to the four LED displays to be able to show the full time. This project was really about learning how an Arduino works and how you can prototype the circuit on a breadboard. In future, I plan to create some more custom projects based around the AT Mega 328, which will likely include a strip board, uh, also known as Vero board permanent circuit, and also creating a custom PCB. So if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do so and you'll find out about future projects as I do them.